Hey, Miranda here. We at the co-op love a good backpacking tent. It's your portable home in the outdoors. But with so many options to choose from, how do you know which one is right for you? Well, let's talk about backpacking tents. The first thing to consider when choosing a tent is capacity or how many people plan on being in the tent. If you only ever plan on solo backpacking, you can get away with a much smaller tent like this one than if you think you'll be sharing your tent with multiple people. Tent manufacturers will let you know how many people a tent is designed for right in the name of the tent. So for example, this is the REI Co-op Half Dome 1 Plus, which is a one person tent. And this here is a Half Dome 2. Behind me, we have a three person as well as a four person version of this tent. While this number is good for getting a general idea of how many people will fit in the tent, there is no standard across manufacturers. So while this half dome is a two-person tent, this Big Agnes Fly Creek is also a two-person tent. So obviously there's a big difference in size. You may also want to choose a tent that's one larger than the number of people you plan on having in it in case you like to have a lot of extra space or if you plan on backpacking with a dog or with small children. The next thing to consider is seasonality or when you plan on using the tent. Three season tents are the most common types of backpacking tents, like this one here. This is a great choice for most backpacking trips, and a lot of people will use them even for camping, which is what I do. These tents use a light pole structure as well as lightweight materials, and they have a lot of mesh for ventilation. With their rainfly, they're totally waterproof, and when they're staked up properly, they'll withstand most summer storms. However, you can get the wind coming up underneath the rainfly and going through the mesh, so they're not a great choice for um, winter environments or really cold weather environments. That brings us to mountaineering tents. Mountaineering tents use a robust pole system with a lot of intersections, which is gonna give the tent its strength. And they also have really durable materials, which are designed to uh, take heavy snowfall and high winds. They have a lot less mesh than you see on a three season tent, and all of the mesh is closable. This will help trap the warm air inside the tent, which is gonna keep it a few degrees warmer. This tent doesn't currently have its rain fly on, but with the rain fly, it has even more durability against the heavy winds. These tents are really great for mountaineering as well as for uh, high alpine conditions. While these tents are good for the heavy rain or heavy snowfall and uh, a lot of storm systems, they are just too heavy and too bulky for most three season backpackers. So this is on the heavier side of three season tents and it weighs about five pounds, whereas this tent weighs nearly 10 pounds. If you're looking for something kind of in between those two, there are extended season tents like this tent here. This one has a slightly more poles or a few more poles than you see on the three season tent and a slightly heavier structure. It has a lot more mesh than you see on a mountaineering tent, but it's all closable. So you can again trap that warm air inside, which is something that you can't do with a three season tent. This tent weighs in at about six pounds or a little over six pounds and that's seasonality. Once you've decided what size and style of tent you want, the next thing you want to do is strike a balance between weight and comfort or livability of the tent. When you look at a tent, there'll be two different weights listed. The first is the minimum trail weight, and then you have the packaged weight of the tent. The minimum trail weight is going to include the tent body, the rain fly, and the poles, all the things that you need just to set it up. The packaged weight adds in the stuff sack, the pole bag, as well as the stakes and the pole repair or any guy lines that come with it. I generally don't carry the stuff sacks with me, but I'm definitely gonna carry the stakes as well as the repair. So your trail weight might be somewhere in between these two numbers. If you're splitting up the tent with friends, like you're backpacking with other people, you wanna aim for around three pounds per person. Ultralight backpackers, however, are gonna go for something a lot lighter, closer to one pound per person. This is just the weight of the tent though. You don't wanna simply consider weight when you're picking a tent. When you start cutting weight, there are a few trade-offs that you need to be aware of. Durability is one concern. Heavier weight materials are generally going to be more durable than lightweight materials. So lightweight tents are more prone to snags and tears and may require some more maintenance on trail. Generally speaking, they're not going to withstand as much abuse as heavier materials will. Another thing that will affect the weight of a tent is whether or not it is freestanding. Freestanding tents, as the name implies, will stand on their own when they're set up with the poles. So you can see here on this tent, the poles go to all corners of the tent, which allows it to stand on its own. Non-freestanding tents, like this one here, will require stakes to stand up. Tents like this uh, require easy ground to stake, and if you take the stakes out of the tent, it'll just fall over. A great thing about freestanding tents is that you can set this up in a pinch and climb inside if bad weather rolls in. You'll still want to stake it out for maximum ventilation as well as strength, but it's a little bit easier of a tent setup. There are also semi-freestanding tents, like this one here. 
So this tent will stand on its own with just the pole system. You can see in the front, you have poles that go to the front two corners. But you'll want to stake the back two corners of the tent and utilize the fly to guy out the sides to maximize the interior space of the tent, which leads us into livability. Not all tents are equally roomy and comfortable. Some tents will skimp on features to save weight, while others have a ton of extras to make them comfortable. One of these features is having dual entry or two-door entry into a tent. This is especially great if you're sharing a tent. It gives you and your buddy your own entryway and exit so you're not crawling over each other for midnight bathroom breaks. In addition to having two doors, some tents will have two vestibules or covered outdoor spaces that allow you to store your boots as well as your gear to keep from cluttering up the inside of the tent. This tent has two doors as well as two vestibules and I have the back one set up and then the front one here is just rolled up. If I did want to use this for storing my gear, I could unhook this and then stake it out and have a lot of extra space. Another important thing you'll want to consider when choosing a tent is the interior space of the tent. If you look at the specs online, you'll see the dimensions of the floor plan as well as the peak height of a tent, but that's not gonna tell you the whole story. Some tents will have sloping sidewalls, which drastically cuts down on the headspace, but also saves you some weight. Let's show you an example of that. This tent has those sloping sidewalls, so you can see that the sides of the tent come up to a point. This cuts down on weight, but it drastically reduces the amount of headspace that you have. This is a really nice ultralight two-person backpacking tent, and while it's perfect for sleeping, it's not great for hanging out. Other tents, like this one, will have vertical sidewalls. This gives you a lot more interior room and headspace in the tent, and it allows you to sit up in tent, which can be really nice if you're reading a book. A few other features that you get with tents are pockets. Remember, with any of these things, you're adding a little bit of weight to the tent, but it can be really nice for organizing your gear. So this tent has pockets on the sides, as well as a pocket up here for storing the door when it's rolled back. And then you also have pockets for headlamps or anything else. Again, all of these extra features are going to add some weight, so it's a trade-off between the livability and the weight of the tent. Once you've chosen your tent, we recommend getting a footprint. Footprints are tent specific and they're designed to protect the bottom of your tent from rocks and will extend its life. If you want some more information, please subscribe below or check out either of our two videos. We'll see you guys later. Oh, and remember, if you want any help setting up a tent, go into any REI and they'll be happy to set something up for you so you can check it out.